I should describe myself. I'm a savvy voodoo sleuth. What am I looking for? Well, if I knew that, I wouldn't need to put out a personal ad. Why did I let my brother talk me into moving here? This town needs saving, he said. Restless spirits, he said. Oh, well, I can't blame them. With all the damn tourists here, I feel pretty restless myself. This town's got all the charm of a burning outhouse. Ugh, just my luck. I better poke around for something to help me put this fire out. Whoa, that's hot. Whoa, that's hot. It's a mask representing Baron Samdi, a voodoo demigod. He's the lord of the underworld and one of the most powerful Loa. I like to keep him close. I find it comforting somehow. It's a mask representing Papa Legba, a voodoo demigod. He's one of the most powerful Loa and arbiter between humanity and the spirit realm. There's a hidden switch behind the mask. My seltzer bottle. That fire's about to have a toe tag and a ticket to the big adios. I like having books in my office for some light reading. Homer, Aeschylus, Euripides, Aristophanes, Herodotus. Just kidding, they're mostly spy novels. This town has all the charm of a burning outhouse. Detective speaking, how may I help you? Yes, that's my real name. No, I don't detect voodoo. I practice voodoo and use hoodoo to detect. It's right on the sign. No problem. Take care. If you're from the fire brigade, you're a little late. Are you voodoo detective? That's my name, unless they changed it while I wasn't looking. What's this about, miss? If you don't mind, I'd like to save the introductions for later, Mr. Detective. I have a rather strange case that may be well suited to a man of your talents. That is, if you do do voodoo. You do do voodoo, don't you? You don't do voodoo, ma'am. 
Why don't you come in and sit down and show some respect? Now, suppose you tell me about it from the very beginning. I need your help, detective. I need you to find out who I am. Oh, come on. I, I swear this never happens. What do you mean, find out who I am? If you're looking for a shrink, that's not really the kind of soul searching I do. I mean, I've lost my memory. You may not understand, but it's rather precious to me and I'd like it recovered. You lost your memory, huh? Did you check the couch cushions? Is this some kind of joke to you? Take it easy, lady. You haven't given me much to work with. Is there anything you do remember? What are you doing? Just a little examination. Oh, okay. This is going to sound strange. I don't know if you'll believe me. It doesn't matter what I believe. You go on with your story. Well, the very first thing I remember was standing at a crossroads. I'm not sure where, but it felt somehow both familiar and foreign at the same time. Like the memory of a dream. There was an old man there. He spoke to me. I believe this belongs to you. I was confused. I couldn't remember ever having seen the pendant before. In fact, I couldn't remember anything. He seemed to understand. Don't worry, child. A little sleep and you'll be back to your old self again. My head started to swim and I blacked out. When I woke, I was lying in a bed I didn't recognize, in a life I didn't recognize. Around my neck was the pendant from my dream and in my hand, your business card. I never printed any business cards. You mind if I take a look? By all means. Hmm. Well, that's not normal. So you don't have any idea who you might be? I've learned, or at least I've been told, that my name is Mary Fontoul. My husband, Victor Fontoul, is the president of Island Ventures. We live in a mansion outside of town with our butler, Benny. We've been married for 10 years, and we're very happy together. And you don't believe a word of it? I may have lost my memory, detective, but I haven't lost my intuition. This woman I'm supposed to be, Mary Fontoul, it's not me. And what if you're wrong? then you'll have made a bit of money, and I'll walk away a confused rich woman. Why not see a doctor? Why come to me? Believe me, I've seen all the best doctors money can buy. The popular opinion is that it's stress. Well, I'm not one to knock the other guy's merchandise, but you could have saved some time coming here first. You said the old man gave you a pendant. Do you have it with you? Yes, here. If it helps the investigation, please keep it. The investigation? Let's not get ahead of ourselves. I still need more information before I agree to take the case. Let's say I am interested. Do you remember how to use a checkbook? I can offer you a $200 advance and another $200 on completion, plus expenses. Money is not an issue. Can you help me out? Or do I need to find someone else?
Well, all right, sweetheart. For that kind of cabbage, I'd voodoo investigate most anything. Consider me hired. Thank you, detective. I don't mind telling you that comes as a relief to me. Here's the money. I have a good feeling about you. Save your feelings for book club, honey. You know, you better keep that shirt button, detective. I wouldn't want your big old heart falling out. I'll be careful, voodoo doll face. How can I get in touch if I need to talk with you about the case? If you need me, I'm staying at the Chic Shell Hotel. Please come see me if you make any progress. Oh, and detective. Yes? Don't call me Voodoo Doll Face. What a knockout. A dame like that could give a zombie a heart attack, or a voodoo detective a real headache. I'd better mail my personal ad and then go get my book of voodoo back from Billy. It's a small, unremarkable pendant made of gold. Mary said it was given to her by an old man in a dream. I should see if I can find where it came from. It's the money Mary gave me. This radio may be old, but the speaker's got a powerful magnet. When I listen, so do the neighbors. One new message. Message one. Hey, it's Ronnie, your landlord. I still haven't received this month's rent from you. You're new in town, so I'm cutting you some slack. But if I have to call you again, I'm not going to be as friendly. Hope to hear from you soon. Thanks. End of message. I can barely see my desk under all these bills. Nice desk, though. It's my number one fan. I better grab Grammy's book from Billy's. Just grab my coat before I go. I'm not talking to any tourists. Suntan lotion. My hat and coat keep me covered. It's a camera. A real beauty, too. I can tell you the image quality is truly remarkable. Plus, we developed the photos right here. Never mind. I'm not shelling out any cash for that. This shirt says, Zawanga, sweet Zawanga. Zawabunga. Nuganine, who dis? It takes Zo to Wanga. Hmm. Zawanga, Zo problems. Just a bunch of cheap tourist junk. Just a bunch of cheap tourist junk. It's a souvenir screwdriver. There's a tiny inscription on the side. I went to Zawanga, and all I got was screwed. <laughs> Funny and functional. I'll take it. Thanks for shopping at Island Trader, where all your trades come true.
It's a camera. A real beauty, too. I can tell you the image quality is truly remarkable. Plus, we developed the photos right here. I'll take it. Great! Thanks for shopping at Island Trader. There's nothing we won't trade for your business. They put the candy where the kids can see. It's a dirty game. Welcome to Island Trader, an authorized dealer of Island brand products. I'm just gonna look around. Go right ahead, sir. That's my brother's bar, Donut Hole Billy's last real place on this drag. I'm not talking to any tourists. I hardly recognize this town anymore. These tourists make me appreciate the mosquitoes. Better not tear this place down, too. These tourists are everywhere. That's my grandmother's book of voodoo. We call her Grammy. She was a legendary mambo. I should really ask Billy before I take it. Looks like Billy's got a little offering to pop a leg for here. Never know when you might need a bucket of water. I should use that bucket of water before I pick up any other heavy objects. I'd rather talk to a loaded gun. Well, if it isn't New Ganin's newest detective, what can I do for you, VD? What do you think of all these tourists? Well, you know I really can't complain. They bring good business to the bar. Where did they all come from? Our quiet little island's become a bit of a hot spot ever since Island Ventures moved in. They set out to commoditize the island experience for package and sale. First it was Island Kitchen, then Island Trader, and now Island Coffee. Sometimes I don't even recognize this town anymore. I don't think they'll stop until this island is just one long line of sweaty tourists shuffling from one island franchise to another. But I can't complain. Like I said, business is good. What was Zawanga like before they showed up? Well, there were a lot fewer Hawaiian shirts and a heck of a lot more character. The main drag used to be a colorful collection of cozy shops and local flavor. Now it's just a tidy row of island brand imitation. They turned a rum on the rocks into a virgin pina colada. Even started tearing down old monuments. The most recent victim was a home foe where island coffee is going up. Now, people practicing voodoo like you and your brother don't really have a place to worship. That's enough about tourists.
been a hell of a day, Ricky. Give me a voodoo fizz and make it kick like a mule with hay fever on Mardi Gras. You got it. On the house. Down the hatch. Ah, delicious. I'm working a new case. Mind if I grill you? Go right ahead, Mr. Detective. Have you seen this pendant before? Oh, vintage. Not really my style, but nice piece. Could be an heirloom. Sorry, I've never seen it before. What can you tell me about Mary Fontoul? Fontoul? I only know of Victor Fontoul. He owns Island Ventures. Thanks for the info, Rick. No problemo. I need the skinny on some of the locals. Of course, VD. What do you want to know? How is my brother Billy doing? Oh, you know Donut Hole. Still tapping his foot and typing out tunes. I'm sure he's pretty fed up with folks trying to take over his bar, but nothing could shade his shine. He's just his wonderful musical self. But right now he's in one of his trances. Why don't you see if you can bring him around? Thanks for the info, Ricky. Any chance I could borrow your mortar and pestle? The tools of my trade? Would I ask you for your gris gris and magnifying glass? Or oh, whatever it is voodoo detectives use to voodoo detect? Well, I guess we could make a trade. What do you have in mind? I'm running dangerously low on mint leaf. I need it for all the goofy drinks those tourists guzzle down. If you can get me more mint, the mortar and pestle are all yours. I've got a split. See you around, Ricky. No use trying to talk to Billy while he's in one of his piano trances. There's got to be a way to snap him out of it. Rise and shine. I guess he's still out of it. I bet I could find a use for this. That's odd. Looks like a metal gauntlet. The sort of medieval knight might wear. I should use that chair first. These things are heavy. This hurts me more than it hurts you, Billy. Still nothing. That's odd. Looks like a metal gauntlet. The sort of medieval knight might wear. Could come in handy, if you'll excuse the pun. What did the five metal fingers say to the face? Hey, something fell out of the goblet. It's an old harmonica, like the one I used to play with Billy when we were kids. You held on to this for me? After all these years. If I want to get through to him, I need to start speaking his language. Just like old times, hearing that harmonica always brings me back. What's new, Voodoo? You mind if I borrow Grammy's book? Help yourself. But I'm surprised you need it. 
Must be a real tough case. This old book comes in handy more often than you think. I've got a new case. Mind if I pick your brain? Go right ahead. Have you ever seen this pendant? Sorry, I don't go in for any jewelry foolery. Ricky knows more about that sort of thing. You could ask him for a hot tip while you sip. Have you ever heard the name Mary Fontoul? Has my baby brother got eyes for some lovely lady? It has to do with the case. Sure, Voodoo. Whatever you say. Wait, Fontoul? Yeah, Mary Fontoul. I know a Victor Fontoul. Maybe she's related to him. She's his wife. Going after a married woman, eh? Oh, I'm just messing with you. Sorry, I never met her. That's enough shop talk for now. What's happening, Billy? Well, shoot, where to begin? What's with the offering on the piano? Something ain't swinging right in the spirit realm. I can't lock down the beat. It's all out of tune. The rhythm's wrong. I figured a little spirits for the spirits couldn't hurt. How have you been? I'm doing all right, brother, especially since you moved here. Although I wish those Island Ventures vultures wouldn't knock such a steady beat on my door. They keep trying to get their tasteless talons into my business. Already own more than half the town. Oh, well, in every life, a little rain must fall. As long as I have occasion to tickle the old ivories, I'm satisfied. I wanted to ask you about something else. Lay it on me. See you around, Billy. Come back again soon, and don't forget that harmonica of yours. It always brings me back.
Magnet came right out. I broke it. It doesn't work. I can't stand tourists. I'd rather talk to a loaded gun. I'm not talking to any tourists. Tourists? Why'd it have to be tourists? It's a chain restaurant, closed for remodeling. Normally, there's a line around the block. This used to be a humfo, a voodoo place of worship. At least until they bulldozed it to make way for island coffee. That guy's loaded. Excuse me, sir. Would you mind stepping away from the vault? Only crumbs for capital account holders are allowed in. The door is locked. Sorry, sir. Mr. Crumbsford is out at the moment. But don't worry, he should be back soon. Hello, and welcome to Crumbsford Capital. What can I do for you today? I'm a voodoo private investigator. I was hoping to speak with Mr. Crumbsford. Sorry, sir. Mr. Crumbsford is out at the moment. But don't worry, he should be back soon. I have no reason to give these people my money. See you. It's a bottle of black ink. I'm sorry, sir, but if you take that ink, other customers won't be able to sign our contracts. Well, we can't have that. Legal documents and books on law. I'd rather be stranded on a desert island than read those. documents and books on law. I'd rather be stranded on a desert island than read those. It's a ventilation shaft. It looks like it runs to the roof. Keep away from there. This desk is a little messy, but still, it's a good desk. Mr. Lawton? Uh, if you've come for legal services, I'm afraid I can't take on any more clients at the moment. Actually, my name is Voodoo Detective. I'm a voodoo private investigator. 
I've got some questions I was hoping you could answer pro bono. Absolutely not. I have to finish preparations for an important, uh, affair this evening. Can't you see how busy I am? Oh, how perfectly inconsiderate. I ought to hold you in contempt. You're just like my wife, Kiki, and her little puppets. Well, I'm not a puppet. I'm a man! Have you ever seen this pendant before? This is a law office, not a lost and found. Now please excuse yourself before I'm forced to take legal action. Be seeing you. I certainly hope not. Tourists are everywhere. I can't stand tourists. I'd rather talk to a loaded gun. I can't stand tourists. Chic Shell Hotel. Are you a camera slinging, culture sapping, self centered tourist looking to be pampered like a baby? Then you've come to the right place. We have our macadamia nut crusted mahi mahi bites. There's the steamed miso Thai snapper. Our special today is poisson cru, made using deadly fugo fish. For drinks, we have the mighty mango mojito, our marooned martini, and our most popular drink, the voodoo wipeout punch. How about some grub? Yes, sir. What would you like? I'll take the special. Excellent choice. Bon appetit. Where'd you get that food? Why, from our kitchen, of course. And you just had it in your coat? They don't call it a dinner jacket for nothing. That hit the spot. How about something to sand down the edges? Certainly. What will it be? I'll have a mojito. Very good choice. Bon appetit. Where'd you get that drink? Why, from our bar, of course. And you were just carrying it in your jacket? They don't call it a bar coat for nothing. Mm. 
Actually, I think I'm good. Please let me know if you need anything. It's the carcass of the Fugo fish I ordered. Looks like the poison gland's still in there. Don't mind if I do. Tourists? Why'd it have to be tourists? These tourists are everywhere. Hello there, handsome. Looking for someone? Not anymore. <laughs> oh, it's like that, is it? My name's Voodoo Detective. I'm a Voodoo private investigator. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Detective. The name's Kiki. Kiki Lawton. Dining alone? Hmm. Why do you ask? Looking for a date? Maybe I am. <laughs> well, I'm sorry to disappoint. I'm expecting company, and my brand of entertainment is best suited for an audience of one. Are you staying at the hotel? I certainly am. I find it a welcome respite. Domestic life can be so drab. Wouldn't you agree? I wouldn't know. Count your blessings. I was hoping I might run into my client. It wouldn't happen if seen her. She goes by the name Mary Fontoul. Female, attractive, about 5'5". Five five. Looks like a little lost lamb that forgot the way home. Who did you say you were again? Bo Peep. Well, I do know Mary, but she never mentioned a tall drink of water like you. If you don't mind, I'd like to ask you a few questions about her. What do you want to know? Mary's lost her memory. I'm trying to find it. Lost her memory? <laughs> the same thing happens to me around 5 o'clock every evening. Do you know if Mary started spending time with anyone new recently? She hasn't mentioned anyone to me. Did Mary ever talk about her past? Not once. Mary never volunteered personal information. And I guess... I never asked. I'm not one to dig up the past once it's buried. Have you ever seen this pendant before? I can't say that I have. Not very elegant, is it? Why do you ask? Oh, I know. It must be evidence from one of your cases. Is that it? Was it stolen? Or perhaps it was cursed. You did say voodoo detective, right? Oh, <laughs> how delicious. Settle down, Mrs. Lawton. No need to get excited. It's just a necklace. Do you know anyone who would want to harm Mary? Well, her husband is quite wealthy. I'm sure there are plenty of less fortunate islanders who might resent her wealth. You know, eat the rich and all. But I'm speaking in generalities now. These people might feel the same way about anyone with two pennies to rub together. Have you noticed Mary acting strange recently? Mary? God, no. She's as reliable a friend as any I've ever had. Such a good listener. Always quiet, non-judgmental, slowly nodding to let you know she's there for you. And those stony black eyes of hers are so beautiful. Like glazed obsidian. Black eyes? She's just lovely. An absolute doll. I've got other questions. I've got more leads to chase down. Gotta blow. See you around, detective. A 
I think I've blown enough bread here. I'm not talking to any tourists. That fish must like these tourists about as much as I do. Good day, sir. Going up? Yep. Great. I just need to see your room key before I can take you upstairs. I'm just visiting. I don't have a room key. I'm sorry, sir. We require anyone going upstairs to have a room key. You can ask the front desk for more details. I don't have a key. Would a couple clams change your tune? Sir, are you trying to bribe me? You catch on pretty quick. My job is worth more to me than a couple of clams, sir. How about the whole chowder? Everyone has a price. Not this elevated driver. I'm sorry, but my loyalty is not for sale. On second thought, I'm afraid of heights. These tourists are everywhere. I can't stand tourists. Good day, sir. Checking in? I'm looking for a woman staying here named Mary Von Tool. One moment. Uh, yes. We do have a Mary Fon Tool staying with us. She checked in the other day. A shorter woman with brown hair and brown eyes uh, came here alone, paid cash. She's staying in room 203. I believe she's in there now. Uh, but you need a room key to get upstairs. The Chic Shell Hotel takes our guest privacy very seriously. Can I get a room? Ordinarily, yes. But I'm sorry to say we're all booked up. Is there anything else I can help you with today? How about if I ask real nice? Will you let me upstairs? I'm sorry, sir. I can't let you upstairs if you're not a guest. You're saying I need a room key to visit a guest? Can I just knock? Like I said, we can't let just anyone upstairs. That's why we require a room key to use the elevator. Every hotel guest is given a spare set to loan out to visitors. That way it's up to them who's allowed to visit. See you. Good day, sir. Checking in? See you. Again, detective. Couldn't keep away, huh? I've got more leads to chase down. Gotta blow. See you around, detective.
complex is Crumsford Family Mausoleum. Here lies our friend Burning Larry. He played with fire, so now he's buried. I need to find out who gave Mary that pendant. Might be time to crack open Grammy's book. Little Junior, small and rough. He died proving he was tough. Here lies celiac sickly Fred. He choked to death on gluten-free bread. Esther dear, she was a saint. But then she sinned, and now she ain't. Darla ran the old hotel until she rang the checkout bell. There's a bouquet of Centennial Dragonheart plumerias. They're beautiful, but I'm no grave robber. Out of one hole and into another. <laughs> Indeed. Hmm, let's see. Six foot, 42 long, but still breathing. What is it that you want? The name's Voodoo Detective. I'm a voodoo private investigator. My name is Eartha. I am the mistress of these hallowed grounds. Good chat. I'll be seeing you, Eartha. Folks always do, sooner or later. I'd rather talk to a loaded gun. I'm not talking to any tourists. Just another mausoleum. I told you, no further questions. I have an important affair this evening. God, you don't listen. You're just like her, always manipulating, putting on an act. Be seeing you. I certainly hope not.
and welcome to Crumbsford Capital. What can I do for you today? See you. The door is locked. Sorry, sir. Mr. Crumbsford is out at the moment. But don't worry, he should be back soon. I see a white candle when I want it painted black. If it isn't New Ganin's newest detective, what can I do for you, VD? <sighs> it's been a hell of a day, Ricky. Pour me another one. You got it. On the house. Down the hatch. I need the skinny on some of the locals. Of course, VD. What do you want to know? Do you know anything about the lawyer on Main Street? Yeah, he does all of Island Ventures' legal laundry. If I were you, I'd keep my distance. That weasel's liable to bite. Have you ever met Kiki Lawton? Is she related to Theodore Lawton? His wife. I see. Well, if she's anything like her husband, I'd steer clear. Some kinds of dirty don't wash off with water. Thanks for the info, Ricky. I've got a split. See you around, Ricky. Hotel. Are you a camera slinging, culture sapping, self centered tourist looking to be pampered like a baby? Then you've come to the right place. I think I've blown enough bread here. Hello again, detective. Couldn't keep away, huh? I've got more leads to chase down. Gotta blow. See you around, detective. I need to find out who gave Mary that pendant. Might be time to crack open Grammy's book.
I think I've blown enough bread here. is locked. I'll need to find a key. Man, this guy's loaded. He's got a garden and a zoo. Man, this guy's loaded. He's got a garden and a zoo. Sure, it's big, but is it huge? Good day, sir. How can I help you? The name is Voodoo Detective. I'm a Voodoo private investigator. Voodoo, you say? What, may I ask, brings you here? Actually, I'm looking for a Mr. Fontoul. Victor Fontoul. That you? Oh, no, sir. I'm Benny, his butler. This is the Fontoul residence, but I'm afraid Mr. Fontoul is in a meeting at the moment. Perhaps you could come back another time. That's all right. I don't mind waiting inside. Mr. Fontule should be finished presently. It's a portrait of a fancy man. like someone's afraid of the dark. Mr. Fontule should be finished presently. There's a letter here addressed to Benny. Tear stains have blotted out some of the words. Benny, you have to stop. I don't know what he would do if he found... Besides, I can't just forget the way you treated me. I don't know what you're getting at, Hoodoo. You're scaring me. I'd like to remain friends, but you have to stop. Sincerely, I wonder if Mary wrote this. Opera records and romance novels. There's also handwritten sheet music. It says Benny and the Jest. A ballad about how my love life has been one grand joke.
left empty. Looks like Benny Boy's been drinking more sherry than the Queen. Empty. Looks like Benny Boy's been drinking more sherry than the Queen. Chapters are bookmarked. Love spells and mind manipulation. What have you been up to, Benny, old pal? I think it's Leopold. Mr. Fontiol should be finished presently. It's a tear-stained letter addressed to Benny. Sounds like a fling gone bad. It says, Benny, you have to stop. I don't know what he would do if he found... Besides, I can't just forget the way you treated me. I don't know what you're getting at, Hoodoo. You're scaring me. I'd like to remain friends, but you have to stop. Sincerely, I wonder if Mary wrote this. It's the camera I bought from Island Trader. The shopkeeper said he'd develop my photos for free. Mr. Fontiol should be finished presently. Listen, you old pit viper. I've stuck my neck out for you financing this new factory of yours. All right, all right. Calm yourself, dear boy. No need to get excited. Well, if I'm excited, it's your fault. <laughs> Quid pro quo, Victor, you slippery worm. I don't like all this cloak and dagger nonsense. Just a little professional discretion, Gordon. We don't want anyone stealing our recipes, do we? Discretion? I don't care a fig for your discretion. I care about what's being done with my money. Be at ease, my friend. I'll explain it all at the shareholders' meeting. For now, please trust that things are progressing on schedule and as planned. <laughs> I don't like being left in the dark, Victor. I don't like it at all. You'd better have some answers next time we meet. <sighs> Sir, a voodoo detective is here to see you. A detective? Voodoo detective, Mr. Fontoul. I was hoping we could talk. I see. Well... Why don't you join me in my office? I got this letter here addressed to you. Where did you get that? Have you been in my room? This looks awfully bad, Benny Boy. A letter from someone who doesn't appreciate your attentions. A book of hoodoo in your room. Mary Fontoul wakes up without her memory. Care to explain? You have been in my room. 
Mr. Detective, I resent what you're insinuating, and I absolutely cannot abide you invading my privacy. I have nothing but respect and admiration for Mary Fontule. She's my dear friend, and one of the few people to show interest in my opera. I will speak no more on the matter. called Ventures Island. That's right. Island Ventures has big plans for Ventures Island. You've got quite the collection here. I don't even know what most of this stuff is. Ah, yes. Those are from the old days before Island Ventures. I used to travel all over the world, collecting bits and bobs from hither and yon. I find different cultures completely fascinating. It's a bit of a hobby. Lots of elegant leather-bound books. Just the kind you expect in a fancy office. A reader lives a thousand lives before he dies. The man who never reads lives only one. You've got quite the collection here. I don't even know what most of this stuff is. Ah, yes. Those are... I used to travel... All I find different... Looks like a wedding photo. Ah, what a happy day that was. Bloom of the peach, blush of the berry. My sweet, sweet berry. Right. got quite the collection. I don't even... Uh, I used to... I find different coat. I do apologize for the excitement out there. When in business, one must deal with all sorts of people. Especially when you require funding. What was that argument about? Well, Island Ventures subsidiary, Island Kitchen, is preparing to launch a new line of food. I'm holding the cards pretty close to my chest to avoid any leaks. Gordon doesn't like that. But surely that has nothing to do with why you've come to see me. Unless you, too, wish to inquire about the particulars of our new secret recipes? I'm here on behalf of my client, your wife. Mary? My God, I've been worried sick. Is she all right? She'd been acting like a completely different person, and then she just up and left. I've got some questions about your wife. Uh, please, go ahead. Was Mary spending time with anyone new prior to her memory loss? Not that I know of. My work requires frequent travel, and Mary always insists on joining me. Couple that with her proclivity for solitude, and she isn't left with much opportunity to make new acquaintances. At least, none that I would be unaware of. Does Mary have any close friends? Mary keeps largely to herself, uh, but she does visit with my nephew's wife on occasion. Her name is Kiki Lawton. What do you know about Mrs. Lawton? Kiki is the wife of my nephew, Theodore, but I'm afraid I don't know her very well. If you don't mind, I've got other questions. Do you know of anyone who would want to harm Mary? Heavens no. Everyone loves Mary. She's kind and good. She never bothers anyone. A mind would have to be truly unhinged to harm a sweet, delicate flower like Mary. What do you know about Mary's past? I'm afraid very little. I know both of Mary's parents died when she was young, and she has no siblings. But she doesn't like to talk about her past, and 
I don't wish to reopen old wounds. Mary was given this pendant around the time she lost her memory. Look familiar? Why, yes. She brought it to me shortly after her memory trouble began. We never were able to find out where it came from. Do you think it has anything to do with her amnesia? I don't know yet. That's enough about your wife for now. Do you mind if I ask some personal questions? Go right ahead. You've amassed quite the fortune. Got any greedy-eyed next of kin looking for a slice of inheritance pie? No, no, nothing like that. The only family I have aside from Mary is my nephew, Theodore Lawton. He runs a law practice downtown and works as my lawyer. And if you and Mary were out of the picture, he would stand to inherit quite a lot of lettuce, right? Are you suggesting that Theodore is trying to kill my wife? I'm not suggesting anything, just exploring possibilities. Do you know of anyone who might want to do you harm? Someone who might go after your wife to get to you? In business, one has many competitors. And of course, if you're successful, there are bound to be those who look on with covetous eyes. But business is about optimizing profit, detective. And there is no profit in harming a man's wife. That's enough about you for now. Can you let me into the greenhouse? My butler, Benny, manages the grounds here. Uh, you'll have to ask him about it. Though he has become a bit more particular about whom he lets in since his tiff with the local barman. That's all for now. Godspeed, detective. It isn't Benny the butler. Hello, detective. What can I do for you? What can you tell me about Mrs. Fontoul? Mary is a good woman. She's always been generous to me. She used to sit for hours with that kind, blank stare of hers, listening to my opera when no one else would. It was unlike her to leave the way she did. I've been so worried. I do hope she's all right. Did you notice anything strange about Mary before she lost her memory? Not that I can recall. She seemed every bit her normal, quiet self. Completely imperturbable, as though a veil of calm separated her from the troubles of the world. Did Mary start spending time with anyone new prior to her memory loss? I don't think so. She only really spent time with Mr. Fontuel and her friend, Kiki Lawton. And myself, of course. The dear. Do you know of anyone who would want to harm Mary? No, I don't. Mary never hurt or offended anyone. Frankly, she didn't interact with all that many people to begin with. I've got this gold pendant here. Have you ever seen it? Sorry, no. If you don't mind, I have a few other questions. What can you tell me about Mr. Fontoul? Mr. Fontoul is a beneficent gentleman. I can make no complaints about the time I've spent working under his employ. But even if I could, it's not a butler's place to say such things. Do you live here? Why, yes. My quarters are adjacent to the staircase. Can you let me into the greenhouse? I'm afraid not. The Fontule greenhouse represents a spectacular botanical achievement. The variation in provenance among the flora we cultivate requires careful attention. The only way to maintain precise control over the environment is to limit the number of visitors we allow in. <laughs> That's why I'm the only one with a key. I am sorry. 
I got this letter here addressed to you. Where did you get that? Have you been in my room? This looks awfully bad, Benny boy. A letter from someone who doesn't appreciate your attentions. A book of hoodoo in your room. And Mary Fontoul wakes up without her memory. Care to explain? You have been in my room, Mr. Detective. I resent what you're insinuating, and I absolutely cannot abide you invading my privacy. I have nothing but respect and admiration for Mary Fontoul. She's my dear friend, and one of the few people to show interest in my opera. I will speak no more on the matter. Thanks, Penny. If it isn't New Ganin's newest detective, what can I do for you, VD? I'm working a new case. Mind if I grill you? Go right ahead, Mr. Detective. Do you know anything about Victor Fontoul? Sure, I know him. He and Gordon Crumsford, the banker, are always pestering poor Billy to sell the bar. Thank goodness he won't. I could never work for one of those tacky Island Ventures abominations. Thanks for the info, Rick. No problemo. I need the skinny on some of the locals. Of course, VD. What do you want to know? What do you know about the banker Gordon Crumsford? Oh, him. He and Victor Fontoul are always pestering poor Billy to sell the bar. What's the story with Benny the butler? Oh, that old so-and-so? Yeah, I used to mix in with him. It was nice to have a little zest for a while, but the twist is he thought it was going to be something more. Things got muddled and I had to get tough. Our relationship ended up on the rocks. He was pretty shaken up. Still... I hope he's doing all right. I found this letter in Benny's room. Lots of tears on it. Is it from you? Tears? Oh, dear, that poor boy. Listen, VD, can you do me a favor? Can you give this to him? I don't like how we left things. I didn't mean to hurt him. What's the story with Benny the butler? Did you... Not yet. Thanks for the info, Ricky. I've got a split. See you around, Ricky. gave me this letter to deliver to Benny. I guess you can call me Voodoo Courier now. I spoke with Ricky. He asked me to give you this letter. I... Oh, Ricky. Thank you, Detective. This means a lot to me. If there's anything I can do to repay the favor, just let me know. Well, if it isn't Benny the butler. Hello, detective. What can I do for you? Can you let me into the greenhouse? Well, normally I'd say no, but you've been so kind to me. Here, take this. It's the key to the greenhouse. Thanks, Benny.
Thanks for the key, Benny. It's a bird of paradise. Top two shelves hold all sorts of flowers. The bottom shelf has aloe, orchid, fiddle leaf fig, and mint. Looks like I'll be getting that mortar and pestle after all. You can never have too many lemons. Fruits and veggies, this place has it all. Nice flowers, nice flowers, nice flowers. Got your mint right here. Wow, you found some. Thanks, VD. I was about to run out. You're a lifesaver. You have yourself a trade. The mortar and pestle are yours. Black candle should work. I think this qualifies as lodestone. Here's my lemon zest. I think that's it. The owner honer mixture is ready to use. Looks like the spell worked. I can feel the pendant pulling me somewhere. Pendant is pulling me somewhere. I should see where it leads. Hmm. Pendant is pointing at this old mausoleum. The plaque says, the Moon Family. Hmm. It's locked. There are fresh footprints leading inside. Someone must have been here recently. What is it that you want? Can you let me into the Lamoon Mausoleum? <laughs> I am a grave digger, not a crypt keeper. I don't have a key. Well, who's got it then? Try Gordon Crumbsburg. He owns the cemetery. I merely fill it with corpses. I saw footprints leading into the Lamoon Mausoleum. Have you seen anyone going in or out of there? Perhaps I did. Perhaps I didn't. My mind's a little misty. All right, Eartha. What's it gonna take? Very little interests me beyond tending to the dearly departed, but I have had my eye on one of those new island brand shovels. Bring one to me, and it may resurrect my memories.
Good chat. I'll be seeing you, Hertha. Folks always do. Sooner or later. Welcome to Island Trader. Please let me know if I can get anything for you. I was told you guys sell a very special shovel here. You must be referring to the upcoming release of our new line of island shovels. That sounds about right. I'd like one. <laughs> you and me both. They're not out yet. What do I have to do to get one early? You'd have to get approval from my boss, Mr. Fontoul. Good luck with that, though. He's pretty strict about new product releases. I'm just gonna look around. Go right ahead, sir. Again, detective. Any news about Mary? The island trader shopkeep told me I needed your approval to buy the new island brand shovel. Ah, yes. I'm very excited about that one. However, as a rule, I prefer to confine our new product releases to a specific date. Is there a good reason you need the shovel right now? It has to do with your wife's investigation. It does? Well, then why didn't you say so? If you think a new shovel could help bring my Mary back to me, then of course you may have one. I'll have the shopman set one aside for you. Thanks, Vic. If you don't mind me asking, how do you anticipate a new shovel will help you with my wife's investigation? It's kind of a long story. You remember that pendant your wife woke up with? Yes, I recall her showing it to me. We never did figure out where it came from. Well, I was able to trace it back to a mausoleum at the cemetery. Does the name Lamoon ring any bells? <gasps> Good Lord. The Lamoons owned a local gumbo restaurant that we acquired in exchange for a substantial stake in Island Kitchen. Gordon and I worked closely with Francois and Esmeralda to integrate their recipes into our menu. It was an exciting, a difficult time. How so? Exciting because the Lamoon recipes drove a new wave of popularity for Island Kitchen. Difficult because Gordon had become infatuated with Francois's wife, Esmeralda. It made for rather awkward business meetings. So what happened then? Well, about a year after the acquisition, Esmeralda and her daughter, Genevieve, washed up on the beach, having drowned. Such an appalling tragedy. Hmm, so what? Mother and daughter forgot how to doggy paddle? Well, yes. The official police report deemed it a swimming accident. Why do you think someone would want Mary to have a pendant from the Lamoon family? That, detective, is the one question I truly have no answer for. What in the world has the tragic Lamoon family tale to do with my Mary? If you figure that out, please let me know. What happened to Francois? As you know, Esmeralda and Genevieve died. As far as I'm aware, Francois went missing around the same time. He wasn't present for the official inquest into his family's demise. So you're saying he could still be out there? It's possible he's still alive, yes. But if he was with his family when they drowned, it's more likely his body was simply never recovered. You don't sound like you buy the official story. Let's hear your version. 
I don't like to speculate without proof. Humor me. I won't quote you. Well, despite my personal difficulties working with Gordon, I hate to cast aspersions on the fellow out of hand. It's just that he always carried a torch for Esmeralda Lemoon. And as I said, it made for rather awkward business meetings. Things only seem to grow worse over time. In my view, it made him unstable. What exactly are you saying here, Mr. Fontoul? You think Gordon killed Esmeralda and Genevieve? Oh, no. I, uh, that seems extreme. And yet here we are. I ask you what you think really happened, and you tell me how crazy your business partner can get. What's a detective to think? Perhaps I shouldn't have said anything. Saying it out loud, it seems uh, far-fetched. Uh, forget I mentioned it. That's enough about the Lamoon family for now. That's all for now. Godspeed, detective. Well, if it isn't Benny the butler. Hello, detective. What can I do for you? Thanks, Benny. Welcome to Island Trader. Local goods at local prices. I believe you have a shovel for me. Ah, you must be Mr. Detective. I've got your shovel right here. I'll take it. A trade's a trade, and our trade is your happiness. Excellent, my darling. I'll be the talk of the tunes. <laughs> it has the logo and everything. You just wanted the sticker? Yes. Right. Well, maybe now you can tell me who was snooping around the Lamoon mausoleum. It was that lousy little lawyer. Something about that guy gives me the creeps. You mean Lawton? Yeah, spooky fellow. I saw footprints leading into the Lamoon Mausoleum. It was that lousy little... You mean Lawton? Yeah. Good chat. I'll be seeing you, Eartha. Folks always do. Sooner or later. I told you, no further questions. I have an important affair this evening. God, you don't listen. You're just like her, always manipulating, putting on an act. I've got a surprise witness, Counselor. Earth of the Gravedigger saw you visit the Lamoon Mausoleum. That is a bold accusation. I think you should leave. So, we're going to do this the hard way, huh? I don't like you. Well, I bet with a little leverage, I could pry my way into your heart. Be seeing you. I certainly hope not. leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Hello 
again, detective. Couldn't keep away, huh? Does the name Lamoon mean anything to you? Lamoon? No, I've never heard the name. Why, who is that? I found out your husband was padding around the Lamoon mausoleum. Left his footprints all over my case. Care to comment? And here I am, thinking he can't leave the office because of work. Did you ask him about it? Well, I've tried, but he keeps giving me the old 86. I'd act surprised, but I know how single-minded and selfish he can be. He has the gall to accuse me of neglecting him while he goes gallivanting about town, telling me he's at the office. Apparently, I need to be a corpse for him to pay me a visit. The liar. Frankly, I think my workaholic husband has been cheating. You don't say. You want information on the Lemoons, yes? If Theodore was at their mausoleum, they may have been clients of his. And it just so happens I have access to all of his files. Let me guess. I scratch your back, you scratch mine. Sound about right? Bring me evidence of my husband's late-night cheating, and I'll give you all the access you want to his files. I'm staying in the honeymoon suite. Here's my room key, in case there's anything you'd like to uh, report. Now, if you wouldn't mind, darling, I'm expecting company. I told you, no further question. God, you don't listen. You know, your wife thinks you're cheating on her. How do you know my wife? She's a friend of my client. I met her at the Sheik Shore restaurant. She offered me a seat at her table. I took the stool, and she took the rocking chair. I see. Well, Kiki has no evidence to substantiate these obscene allegations. The jury's still out on that one. My relationship with my wife is a private matter. I advise you to mind your own business and leave me to mine. He's seeing you. I certainly hope not. I don't need a picture of that. seen one tropical paradise, you've seen them all. The grill is screwed in place. I can hear someone shuffling papers in the office below. to get the grill off, but my screwdriver broke. Cheap Island brand garbage. If I could fit in there, I'd have front row seats to the counselor's crooked cabaret. But I either need to shrink or find someone a little more petite to help me out. I think it's time to pay a visit to my client. I don't need a picture of that. That must be Crumsford Sr. Ah, yes. I like to think old Peepa is watching over me. Oh, no.
No, this doesn't look good at all. Congreve's inflammable powders is down 30%, and the Baltimore Opera Hat Company isn't looking much better. That's a nice desk you got there. Beautiful, really. How did you get into my office? <laughs> you don't smell like a man of business. Nice place you got here, Mac. Though I prefer something a little more modest, like the Chrysler building. Who are you, and what do you want? The name's Voodoo Detective. I'm a voodoo private investigator. Ah, uh, yes. I know who you are. You're Donut Hole Billy's brother. If you care for him, you should advise him to sell me his pathetic excuse for a business. I'm looking into what happened to Mary Fontoul. What do you mean? What's happened to her? Someone's wiped her memory. Dame's got the recall of a senile goldfish swimming in a martini. So, Victor hired a private investigator to figure out why his wife finds him so forgettable. <laughs> I could have sniffed that out for him. <laughs> Actually, Mary's the one who hired me. I was hoping you could answer some questions. I see. Very well, detective. I'll hear your questions, but make it quick. I've got some questions about the Fontoules. What can you tell me about Mary Fontoul? I don't know her very well. Our brief interactions are entirely a consequence of my business dealings with her dreadful husband. She always seems like a nice enough woman, which raises the question. What is she doing, married to that Cretan? Do you know why anyone would want to hurt Mary? Mary? No. However, it isn't terribly difficult to invent reasons to harm her husband. Perhaps someone's gone after the goose to get the gander. Of course, now we're building pyramids of surmise on a foundation of ignorance. What do you have against Victor Fontoul? He seems like a decent man. He's an abysmal human being. A cold brain divorced from any heart. You've known him only briefly. I've been working with the man for years. Give it time. You may see things my way. I've got other questions. I heard it through the grapevine that you own the cemetery. Indeed I do. Death and taxes. I can't collect the latter, but I can certainly profit from the former. Can you let me into a specific mausoleum? I'm afraid not. Only the families of the interred are allowed keys to their mausoleums. It's entirely up to them what they do with their dead. Does the name Lamoon mean anything to you? I... Yes, I knew the Lamoons. Then make like a clumsy barista and spill the beans. They were a family of three. The father, Francois, the daughter, Genevieve, and the mother, Esmeralda Lamoon. May she rest in peace. They owned a local gumbo restaurant that was acquired by Island Ventures. Thus, I knew them through my business dealings with Victor. What do you know about Genevieve Lamoon? She was a child. What more is there to say? Just another seed that never had the opportunity to sprout. What do you know about Francois Lamoon? Personally, I found Francois to be a noisome bore, a crude man with a primitive mind. How he managed to win a treasure as pure and wonderful as Esmeralda, I'll never comprehend. What about Esmeralda, Lamoon? My dear Esmeralda, a bouquet of a woman. Her smile was serene, her heart was kind, her temperament mild, and her cooking... Her cooking was an 
intimation of divinity. I won't lie, Detective. I loved Esmeralda. Always from afar, but I loved her. You make it sound like the Lamoons are all dead. Esmeralda and Genevieve are dead, yes. According to the papers, they drowned. But we don't know what happened to Francois. According to the papers, I take it you have your own theory? Well, you already know Victor acquired the Lamoon family restaurant to help launch Island Kitchen, yes? What you might not be aware of is how the Lamoons were compensated. Overcompensated, in fact. Victor made no effort to conceal that he was grossly displeased with the situation. Over time, the man's mind seemed to fray. He became distant and cold in the presence of the Lamoon family. That is, until they were no longer around. So you think Victor killed the Lamoons? What, to get back control of the company? Well, yes, control, but it was also about money. With the Lamoons out of the picture, Victor became a much wealthier man. You may well ask if money was motive enough for murder. I would argue that men have killed for less. And if you knew Victor as I know him, well, you'd have a much shorter list of suspects. I asked Victor about the Lamoons too. He had an interesting take on things. Oh, I'm sure he did. Victor seems to think you killed the Lamoon family in a fit of jealousy for Esmeralda. Sound about right? I should destroy that man and staunch the endless flow of fetid vitriol that spills from his disgusting mouth. Why in the world would I kill the woman I love? There's no substance to these wicked indictments, and if you believe them, you're an even bigger fool than you look! I've got other questions. That's enough for now. I may come back later. Hello, and welcome to Crumpsford Capital. What can I do for you today? See you. Good day, sir. Going up? Yep. Great. I just need to see room key before I can take you upstairs. Here's that room key you demanded. Fantastic. Step right in. 